Hi there. After conducting the analysis on the basis of shifts in the demand and supply curves, now we will consider the effect of the taxes on producer and then the effect of the tax on consumer. So let's get started. Uh, we have the demand and supply functions and we can do this partial market equilibrium analysis in its original form. This is the equality of the two demand and the supply functions and then we have the equilibrium price and then we have the equilibrium output. So then uh, we can do this experimentation of introducing two rupees per unit tax on the producer. So we are imposing the tax on the producer this time. Let us assume that this uh, tax is represented by notation T. Now the supply function will be affected because we are talking about producer, the tax is levied on this and he will uh, have to face the consequences in the first step. In the first step, the price will be affected in a negative way because he has to pay the tax after he receives the price. So out of the price, he will pay the tax. So we are going to subtract it from the price and this difference P minus T will actually show the price which is retained by the supplier because that will be after deducting the tax. The value of tax per unit is 2 and we already know that price is also per unit. So per unit price minus per unit tax is a logical difference. And then we can simplify this expression and we will get the new supply function which is the supply after tax. Now we are going to equate the two that is the original demand function which is still now unaffected and the supply function which is now augmented with the tax. Putting these two values this is the demand function the original one and this is the post tax supply function that is after the imposition of the tax. This will be the price, the new price at equilibrium and this will be the equilibrium output which is obtained by substituting the equilibrium price in the supply function which is after tax. So these are the two values that are here as the equilibrium values. Now we can do a little further analysis and that is the analysis of the revenue of the producer before tax and after tax because revenue is an important variable for a producer to find out the profit. So we should also see the effect on the revenue of this tax which is being imposed. So the revenue before tax will be the product of price and output before tax. Evidently there is no complexity in this thing. So in a very simple way we can multiply the price before tax and the output before tax. We have already found these two values here and we can use these values that is 52 here and output is 124. So it was before the imposition tax of tax. Now we have this amount as the revenue before tax. We can find out the revenue after tax. This is the product of the two price after tax and uh, output after tax. Here the price needs to be calculated because this is the price which is left after the payment of the tax. So we have to subtract the amount of the tax from the price that we have found at equilibrium this one and then we will get the price which is actually retained by the producer and that should be used in the calculation of the revenue because tax cannot be included in the revenue of the producer it will go to the state so this is why it is 51.6 which is actually the difference of the price at equilibrium after the imposition of tax and the tax itself so this will be the answer and now we can use this price which is retained by the producer after paying the 
text to the state with the output after the imposition of text and we will get the revenue after the imposition of text. So we can clearly see that the revenue before text was greater as compared to the revenue after the tax. And it is logical because the tax on the producer will definitely discourage the producer as the price is now being reduced by the amount of the tax in the first step. The burden of the tax can be shifted to the consumer, but that is in the next step. Right now we are talking about the first step. So change in the producer revenue is now negative, which means that there is a decline in the revenue of the producer. So this is how the producer tax can be evaluated. And we can also do this analysis for the consumer. And here you can see we are considering the case of effect of tax on consumer in the analysis of the partial market equilibrium. Again, we have started with the reprise of the demand and supply function in their original form. These are the two values of equilibrium. And now we are imposing a per unit tax of two rupees on the consumer. And we know that consumer now has to pay a higher price. So that amount of tax will be added into the price that is being paid by the consumer. And we can further uh, solve this. Here we are, the new demand function after the imposition of the tax. These are equated, the new demand function that is after tax and the original supply function, because in this case, we are assuming that no tax is imposed on the supplier. We can put these two values here, the demand after tax, the supply before tax. This will be the new equilibrium price and this will be the new equilibrium output and that is obtained by substituting the value of equilibrium price after tax in the demand function after tax. So in this way we can do the analysis of the partial market equilibrium from the point of view of consumer when tax is imposed on it and we can also do the analysis not just for uh, the output and the price for this produ producer side but we can also do the revenue analysis as well that how the revenue has changed increased or decreased due to the imposition of the tax so both of the cases of the partial market equilibrium have been addressed here, producer tax as well as the consumer tax. And in the next video, we will uh, extend our analysis from partial market equilibrium to general market equilibrium, where we will not be restricted to one good. We will be extending our analysis to more than one goods. And this is why this is partial market equilibrium, and that will be general market equilibrium.